You know, there are some times when we want to revisit a location that we've shot previously. And so tonight, I wanna to do just that. I'm out here on the farm property with a subject matter just over there, which is actually a dead tree sitting on this rocky little hilltop over there. And my intention is to get the setting Milky Way core, which is over there behind me, setting in the southwestern sky. So at the moment, it's about 3 a.m here in the southern hemisphere in July. And so we have the Milky Way sets down uh, in the west. And so I've shot it before, and I've done a couple of different types of shots, panoramas, etc. But tonight I've got something else in store. So let's go and have a look and see what we can come up with. Okay, well, so as you can see here behind me, there's this beautiful old dead tree. Now, everybody loves a dead tree, but this one is gonna pose the odd challenge for me uh, to light under the Milky Way. It's got so many twists and turns and bits and pieces that I wanna light, and then what I'm going to do is stack the background sky because I wanna get the best possible quality out of that Milky Way that I can possibly get. And I've been doing a lot of stacking lately using uh, the Windows free program called Sequator, which is absolutely awesome. And so that's what I'm gonna do here. Now I've never shot this with stacked shots before. So that's what I'm gonna do tonight. And I'll just get my camera and tripod and start setting that up right now. All right, so what I've done here is I've set my tripod quite low to the ground with my Nikon Z6 here and the 20 millimeter f 1.8 lens i chose that lens specifically because i didn't want an extremely wide angle i'd love to bring my uh, foreground subjects a little bit closer and i like to draw the milky way in this case the milky way core just that little bit closer and the longer the focal length the more you do that it's always a trade-off between getting enough in and actually having a nice shape and um, composition. So that's why I love the 20 millimeter lens. Not only that, it's an f1.8, so I can stop it down to say, for example, f2.8 and get really sharp images that way. I love this lens, it's a beauty. So here I am, got my tripod low to the ground. I talk about this quite a lot, and the reason I have my tripod low down to the ground is to create more dynamics in my shot. Now, simply this, the tree here is laying down on these beautiful granite rocks. And that is the feature of my foreground here, of course. But as well as that, I've got that glorious Milky Way core laying down just to the right-hand side of the tree. And what I want to do is make sure that the tree is actually reaching up into that sky. So if I had my tripod a lot higher, the tree is therefore down low and the horizon line is too high. So that's the main reason. I like to get this foreground subject, whether it be an old truck or a car or a tractor or a tree, it doesn't matter. I like to get it um, high up in the shot so that it interacts and blends much better with the actual sky above. Okay, so for my settings, I'm setting my um, aperture to f2.8 and my shutter speed to 10 seconds and my ISO to 6400. Now a lot of the questions I get asked specifically relate to settings of the camera and I know that's very important so I'll try and explain why I'm setting the camera up the way I am. Now I'm shooting at f 2.8 even though this is an f 1.8 lens because when I stop down the aperture of the lens I alleviate the corner uh, coma and aberrations and I get a much sharper image from corner to corner right across the frame. Now I'm shooting at ISO 6400 because I need a high ISO, you always need a high ISO to be able to capture the faintness of the stars. Now even though it's a really dark sky location, I still need a high ISO. Of course the, the Z6 can um, operate really well at those high ISO, so that's not a problem. Now. 10 second shutter speed. I'm using a 20 millimeter focal length. Why am I shooting for 10 seconds? 
I could nearly get away with a 20 second shutter speed. Well, maybe I could, but what I wanna do is get pinpoint sharp stars. And because I'm going to be stacking these, I'm gonna shoot 12 in a row exposures at 10 seconds. So 10 times 12, that's 120 seconds. That's two minutes worth of exposures. Now in that two minutes, the stars are moving. So I need them to be as closely spaced as possible. And that's my intention and I'm gonna go with that. All right, so here we go. I've just taken those 12 images. Now, if you can have a look here, you won't probably be able to see, but as I scroll through them, I notice there's an airplane going through. But you know, that's not gonna be a problem because when I put these into Sequator to stack them, it'll just get rid of those airplane trails just like that. So as you can see, the histogram, a lot of people talk about histograms on nightscape images and expect the histogram to be somehow magically right over to the middle of the frame. Well, in my experience, it doesn't happen like that. You'll tend to, tend to see a histogram over on that left-hand side of the frame more often than not, as you can see from these images here. But there we go, there's our 12 exposures, ready for stacking. All right, well, I'm really happy with how those images have come out so far and I'm looking forward to getting into the Sequator program and stacking those. But before we get anywhere near that, I've got to do my foreground shots. And my plan is to do about eight to 10 images here. I'm gonna walk around and light this from various angles as I normally do. I'm gonna be using my LED lenser torch, which is here in my pocket, ready to go. Um, I'm shooting this, uh, by the way, I'm shooting this at about a 4,000 Kelvin white balance. Um, I still have the gel on the front, which warms up the image somewhat, but uh, you know, I can adjust that later if I need to anyway. So I'll get into that now. Uh, now remember, when you're doing these shots with the intention of blending, whatever you do out here in the field, make sure editing job later on, easier or harder, depending on how you approach things. Number one rule, never ever move the camera or tripod between any of these shots. So in, in essence, I'm gonna be shooting about 20 shots here or thereabouts, and between any of those shots, the camera cannot move because if it does, these images will not blend. All right, let's get into it. I'm gonna go and start light painting. Okay, so what we now have are eight exposures shot of different angles of the tree. Now, these were shot at 15 second shutter speed at f8 at ISO 800. Okay, so once again, I want to explain why I chose those particular settings. Uh, firstly, f8. Now, I shot at f8 because the front of the tree is fairly close to the camera in relation to the rear end of the tree down the back there. So what I wanted to do was increase my focal plane. So the more I stop down the lens, the more uh, my focus plane increases. And that's what I wanted to do. Secondly, I shot at 15 second shutter speed. Um, originally I shot at 10 seconds for the sky. I went to 15 seconds just simply to give myself more time to shoot, to move around. There's a lot of rocks on the ground here and I had to move fairly slowly um, just I didn't want to trip up. So the, I've said this before, but the shutter speed when you're doing light painting foregrounds is totally irrelevant. You can shoot for as short or as long as you want. Uh, sometimes I like to keep the shutter speed short because ultimately I don't want any sky stars in the background because I'm gonna to have to erase them all out anyway. So the, the lower the shutter speed, the more closed down the aperture and the lower the ISO, the better. Speaking of ISO, for this shot, I shot at ISO 800. Um, and I, you know, again, I, sometimes I shoot at 500, sometimes 600, sometimes 800. Um, it's just a matter of working out what works best with the time frame you've got and being able to get around the subject and um, 
things like how reflective the subject matter is. There's a lot of reasons. But anyway, that's why I shot with those particular settings. So of course, one of the things that I use that helps me with all of this light painting is a remote control shutter release. And this is the Yong Nero RF603. I've showed you this before. I use it for just about all of my shoots because I can get away from the camera. I don't need to keep touching the shutter button or anything like that. I can walk around uh, anywhere up to about 50 or 60 meters and I've had no trouble with that. These are particularly useful for doing selfie shots or whatever else. But you know, if for any of this, I can just keep going and it increases my workflow and speed at my locations no end. So looking at the back of the camera, I think they look fantastic. I'm really excited about this particular shoot. I've been wanting to do it for quite a while now. So from here, I'll be sending off all of the images into the various software. I start everything in Lightroom. I do my initial edits and lens corrections, etc., in Lightroom. Then I'll send those sky images off to Sequator to be stacked, and that does a brilliant job of that. Then all of the images from there are sent into Photoshop, and I'll mask and blend the foreground here and blend it with the sky image on the bottom of the stack. And I think you'll agree with me that this image has come up so, so well. And so there we have it, another expedition out under the stars comes to a close. It's been fantastic. I've really enjoyed my time here, up on the hill, out on the farm, with clear skies overhead. And I think you'll appreciate that the image is worth all of the effort. So thanks again for joining me, and I feel so privileged that you do so week after week. And you know, I enjoy it so much out here. I get such exhilaration just simply by being out here under the stars. And I hope that you catch a little bit of that passion that's in my heart for what I do. So I'll be looking forward to seeing you on my next adventure out under the stars. And I guess that's probably not gonna to be too far away. So I'll look forward to seeing you guys next time. See you later.